Hello, this is Stuart, Strategos Level 3, uh, running the Battletech UK Southeast events and the comstar.home.blog uh, Battletech blog on WordPress. Um, I'm coming to you today just to show you how to use Megamech. Uh, Megamech is a open source piece of software that enables you to create forces, which is really useful just for the tabletop game, but also to act as an entire simulator for playing games. So you can actually use it really either way. I use it quite a lot just to actually create forces for the tabletop game and then to create files which I can use to print sheets. But you can also play entire campaigns on this. Now Megamech's part of a suite of different pieces of software which you can download from megamech.org. There are free uh, packages. It's worth just downloading them all. There's Megamech, Megamech Lab, and Mech UK. They all come in separate folders, but when you get them, it's worth just copying all of the documents and putting them all into the same folder, and then that way they will all just work together um, when you want them to. I'm just gonna be using, though, uh, Megamech and also printing the files using Megamech Lab. So this first tutorial, we're just gonna show you how to use Megamech to create a force either to use in the game or to use just in the tabletop to print sheets. This is just a splash screen. You can see we've got two versions of Megamech. We're currently using 46.1, which is a stable version. There's also a developer's version, which is I think 47 at the moment, um, which is more unstable. So I would recommend just sticking with 46.1, which is the current uh, stable version. I can start a new game. It doesn't matter what you put here for name server password and port are used later if you want to do direct IP connection games. We're just gonna use this uh, just for this computer. You can also register on a server here for internet based games. So I'm just gonna give this a uh, name of uh, Liao Medium Lance. I'm gonna click OK. And it's gonna launch me from this splash screen into the main interface for Megamech. Right, and here we go. So we've got quite a lot of useful tools here. Um, the first we're gonna look at is just add a combat unit. So when we click on add a combat unit, we're gonna get this rather large interface here, which you can resize, it's quite worth resizing. And it allows you to search through any type of unit. And there's really everything, mech, tanks, battle armor, infantry, you name it, it's got it. If it's on the master unit list, which is the service that's run by Catalyst, uh, just search master unit list um, in Google and you'll find that it has every single uh, unit and their uh, battle value for the, in under the battle value two system. Um, it's sorted them into these different categories. You've got the introductory box set, which are all the level one technology mechs, which are basic things like autocannons and LRMs. You've then got the total war, which are mainly the level two box sets. Okay, so streak missiles, some of the more advanced technology, endo steel, etc. And then you've got advanced, which might use level three rules, such as artillery, etc. And there's also separate uh, systems here for clan as well. So I'm just gonna search from the introductory box set and we're gonna put everyone's favorite mech. Well, it's only my favorite mech. It's a definitely a workhorse. I'm gonna put the Griffin in. And you can type in anything here. You can type in the name, you can type in the code. It gives you all of the units here that are within that particular technology level, the year that were made, the BV, the base BV, the weight. Uh, it also gives you these um, cannon specialized units, which uh, I'm not exactly sure where they come from, but are listed in, in the law. Um, so let's go for the classic 1N with the LRMs and PPC. And it will give you the summary here in a nice, there's two different ways of looking at TRO or in this way. And it just gives you all of the quirks, gives you all of the ammo, etc. So it's very easy to, to search through. Um, you can see the 1S there, which is got lasers, large lasers, medium, medium laser, S LRM5. Um, so it's gonna click on the 1N, just click select. Uh, let's pick a couple of other things. Let's go for a um, Shadowhawk. 
following our basic box set. You don't even have to type the whole name in for it to find it. Everyone hates the 2D, it's got no armor. Let's go for the 2H. Select, and we'll go for another classic 55 ton, the Wolverine. And you've got a variety of different ones here to choose from. Let's go for the auto cannon one, the 6K. Okay, oh, that's no, not the auto cannon, it's the large laser one. I like that. Select. Now, I could do some advanced searches. I can choose different uh, options here. I don't tend to use this much, but it allows you to select all units that have a particular walking speed or a particular jumping speed or have a certain amount of armor that the chassis can take, um, have particular weapons, uh, or come from a particular year. So that's one different system that you can use. So I could search for everything that has an AC-20 and say add. I want everything that's got an AC-20 up to 3028. So let's just do, do that and see what it finds. Doesn't find anything. Oh, that's because I've got that still in there. There we go. So these are all the things that have AC-20s. So I can come off of the AC-20 and the uh, oh, that and just remove that to just clear that. Um, so I'm going to choose for the last one. Let's go for a classic 65 ton neck jumping thunderbolt. So I've just created a lance. I've got the BVs here. Uh, it's assigned to me, which is important if you're playing this as the, uh, as the simulator game, which we'll do shortly. It's got the names of the pilots, their skills and all the information here and a little icon which is uh, identical to the way the mech looks um, you've got the summary here uh, with the bv and tons and cost and we're going to look at just how you might customize this and this is useful for the tabletop game so you want to put your own units names in or you want to give random names you can do that random names is great fun you can select a, a force so we're going to have house Lail, felon confederation 50% male, 50% female, randomized, and I now have a bunch of people from the Capellan Confederation. I can double click on one of the pilots here, and I can actually give it uh, a rank, or I can change the name completely, type my own name in. I can even put in uh, a call sign in here. Um, I can change the gunnery and piloting. This is quite important, so let's make this an elite pilot. Gunnery two, piloting three. And when I do that and click OK, it's going to update the BV using the random, using the um, uh, master unit list costs for that. So it's gone up to 2137. That's an expensive ripping for an experienced pilot. There are some more advanced things you can do in this as well. You can actually go in and change the ammunition type to whatever ammunition you want. That's important because it will for the game of course when you're playing on um, on the computer it's important but if you're doing this on the printing sheets it's useful to have those listed one thing i found at the moment is the guided ammo isn't coming out correctly it doesn't seem to work out use the correct uh, cost it adds cost when you select semi-guided ammo or arrow four and that's something i found recently but otherwise you can pick anything particularly you want or you can just keep that there uh, you can disable auto ejection, uh, which is useful when you're playing the simulation game. Uh, deployment is really just about where you, when you're setting up scenarios, where they come from, do they come from, what round do they come in, and do they uh, deploy on the north or south or anywhere on the map. But we'll look at that later when we're setting up a game. You can actually put in pictures here, which again is really only useful when when you're actually um, setting up uh, a longer term campaign. I'm just gonna click OK. Um, it's quite useful if you want to copy this and create a um, equipment list for, um, you know, for, a, for a force to switch this to compact display to highlight everything. Hold down Control and C on your keyboard and then go into Excel or word and just drop there we go and just drop it into excel 
Um, so that can be quite useful um, when you're just trying to create a summary list uh, in, in a larger scale uh, company level uh, game because there's no way to actually print from here. You can't print this list directly. There are a few other little things here. You can change the camo. So let's choose something. We've got Canon different ones here from Niao. So let's uh, go for Warrior House. My favorite at the moment, which is Warrior House of Jewelry. Uh, where are we? Warrior House of Jewelry. There we go. That's what I've been painting my mechs currently to look like. Um, and there you go, you've got yourself a lance. So now if I wanted to save this, I can just go to save unit list and let's just call it Lao Medium Lance. There we go, Lao Medium Lance. It saves as a .mul file. Now you've saved it, you can go into Mega Mech Lab. Mega Mech Lab you can use for creating custom mechs, but I use it really just for printing sheets and it's very easy to use. Once it's opened, you just go to File, um, Print, and then you do Print from Mol or from Mol single sheet. The difference between these two is this one, it will create a separate record sheet for each unit. Uh, this one, sorry. This one will actually create the units. If they're vehicles or infantry, we'll put them onto the same page. So if you've got two vehicles, it will put them onto the same page. If you've got five infantry, I'll put them onto the same page. So that's quite useful for saving a few trees. Um, but usually I just print it in this one. And if we've got vehicles, it'll print two vehicles per sheet. Um, so that's it. So if you do that, it kicks you into the uh, file selection. So you just basically select the file you want to print. Gives you your print screen options. And I'm going to select PDF because you can actually just print it as a PDF. And I'd recommend for page setup, you change this to A4 in the UK. And appearance is monochrome. And then you can just click print. I won't do that because it actually can take two or three minutes to actually print something either to the printer or to a PDF. It just takes a while to, to do that, to compile it all together. But it will do it eventually. So I'm going to close that down. Make it make sure you can actually just print sheets of any um, any um, mech. If you just want to print one sheet, you can just go print from cache and do the same thing. So I can print that mech there and just do select and close and just do file and print current unit. Um, so that's one way of using things or you can set, you can queue several units up together, which is another way of printing these. I much prefer doing it this way with uh, Mega Mech Lab because you get the names and you get the uh, skills that you can change and changes the BB. So it's far, far more useful. Uh, the next thing I'll just show you how to create a random force and how to create a force for an AI. So let's go ahead and put a bot. The bot's going to be the AI. The bot in this is called Princess. It's a bit bonkers. You probably, someone told me if you need to want to challenge, you really have to set the BV of the princess to be about 25% more than your BV. You can change a lot of the settings around for how it acts um, and, and where it comes in and what it wants to do, or you can just leave it all blank and it will it'll act in a particular way. So I'm just going to leave that like that and click OK. So now I've got there's an AI documentation here as well. You can read a bit more about it. So I'm just going to click on Princess here, and then we can actually select some units. But rather than just selecting some units, well, I'll select one. Let's just load one unit in. Um, add a combat unit. Let's put a catapult in. Oh, can't spell. So let's put a catapult in. There we go. Select. Now you'd have to change the owner though. So you basically right click and do change owner princess. Um, so now you've created that, you can create a whole lance just manually and then it's ready to go. Or rather than creating it manually, I'll just delete this one just by clicking delete. 
you can create the army randomly. So I've created a force that's 5,863 BV, and let's create one that's uh, balanced with that. So I'm just going to use the um, create random army. And there's several different things you can use here. The most common one is this BV matching. So I'm going to set the BV matching to be uh, somewhere between 5,500 and 6,000. You can be quite tight with that and say what range you want it at. You can select the number of units you want, mechs, vehicles, battle armor, infantry, and what the range of time period. Do you want only cannon units? I'm going to click on that one. If there's any spare BV, do you want to be used to buy extra infantry? I don't think that's a good idea because you end up with loads of infantry wandering around. Um, and then you just click roll. And it gives you a suggestion. You can just keep rolling. It doesn't do it as a particular weight class, though. You, it just does it quite randomly. And you can just click add all and then add to player. So I can just click princess and click OK. And now Princess has got a Lance, which is balanced with ours. Uh, there are other ways to create random armies. You can use the random assignment tables, and that just gives you a table to roll on, basically. So I can click on a, uh, a table for House Marek, Mech, uh, Medium Mech, Tech Level A, and just roll on that table, and it will give me mechs that are just medium from that from that particular uh, random assignment table and all these random assignment tables are canon they come from the different sources you can even generate your own random assignment table here these two options are really for a more advanced gameplay invo involving um, the um, strategic operations and interstellar operations books uh, but bv matching is a really good way just to have uh, to create a force pretty instantly so now that's it, we've created two forces. We um, can then launch into the game and play a game. Um, and one last thing I think to show you is just this right click of what you've got here. So you've got view, which just allows you to see the information about the unit, configure, which we've done. Edit damage enables you to basically set uh, pre-existing damage to the unit if you're playing a particular scenario. Uh, configure all and enables you to change a lot of different things at the same time. So configure all, I could have a look at basically changing several parts of them if I had multiple ones selected. Um, edit camo just for that particular unit rather than all of them. Delete, of course, randomize names and skills. Change owner and you can also swap pilots around if for some reason you wanted to mix that up, change the BV for instance. But that's it. So now that tutorial is over, we've got our armies together. And next time we'll be looking at how to actually play a game and use uh, the select map tool to select the maps that we're going to play on and in interface to play. But for those people who don't want to use Mega Mech just to play online, it's just a really useful thing to build armies for the tabletop game and enables you to very simply uh, select a force, spend hours changing it until you finally got something that you like, and then print all of the uh, record sheets out in one go. So that will be really useful. So until next time, goodbye.